Hi, I'm Sarah Willoughby, author, speaker, spiritual mentor and energy healer and I help people transform their lives. Today I'm with the beautiful Lauren Flynn. Lauren is the lead singer of the band Olivia Fox and Lauren and I have connected over her beautiful song Elevated Wars which Lauren wrote when she was going through a miscarriage. And this song really resonated with me and touched my heart. So welcome, Lauren. It's wonderful to have you with me today. Thank you so much for having me. My absolute pleasure. So for those of you who are familiar with my story, I've um, also been through multiple miscarriages and I know how hard it is when you're going through that. And I know Lauren does too, how alone you feel on that journey. So I would love for you, Lauren, to share your infertility journey with us and what inspired you to write your beautiful and very raw and vulnerable song with us. Um, yeah. Um, so my husband and I, we got married and I happened to be ovulating right around the time that we got married. And so I had, I was just like, okay, we're going to get, we're going to get pregnant, like right on the honeymoon. And I was like, this is going to be perfect. Yeah. And so I remember even, I, I feel so silly. I remember the, the morning after we got married and I like just walked out onto the beach and I was just like, I'm pregnant. Like this is happening. Like, and I just was so confident. And then of course, um, that month went by and then another month and then another. And then I was like, what is happening? And, and finally, I mean, we struggled and struggled and, and after probably about nine months, I talked to my friend and I was just like, is this normal? And she's like, most of my friends would have probably spoken to somebody at this point. And so mm -hmm. that's when it kind of hit me that, wow, like I'm actually struggling with infertility. I, I, and I didn't, I didn't think that, but to actually make call and make the appointment it's just having to say the words it just felt I, I was very i just didn't even know how to feel and, and what to think but anyway made the appointment and then um we went through a few years of treatments we did iui yeah i think we did six iuis oh, wow. and um this was after three years finally we we got pregnant doing one of the iuis yeah and you know of course we're very excited and um we go in for the first ultrasound and there was just an empty sack there was no baby and they they said that they could see some um some tissue that had formed but was kind of bro broken up by that time okay and so um that was devastating of yeah. course and um, I decided to go ahead and just do, have the miscarriage on my own and pass it myself and not do a DNC because it was it was just all I had and all I wanted for so long. And I, I didn't know if I would ever even have that ever again. And so I just kind of wanted to hold on to, to that moment and to, and to what I had. And so, um, and I just wanted to experience the whole thing and just, I don't know, it was, it's kind of odd and probably weird, but I just, I wanted it. Not weird at all. I think <laughs> I just wanted to. I've, I've done it both ways. I've, I've been in for the DNC the first time. And then the second time when I lost the twins, I'd booked in for the DNC and then they passed naturally. So I don't think there's any right or wrong way. And I think from my experience, both ways are equally traumatic, equally uncomfortable. Um, but yeah, I absolutely understand what you're saying. There is something very special about um, being able to let your body do what it naturally needs to do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so in the moment, when I was in the um, office and getting the sonogram, and they told me that there's no baby, there's no heartbeat. You know, I just, just sat there and I, and I remember saying 
to my husband, like, I don't know what to do. Like, what do, what do I do? What do we do? Like, I, this is completely not what I was expecting. And, you know, you hear about miscarriage, of course. I knew um, a friend that had one, but she didn't really talk. I mean, it just wasn't, we didn't talk about it. And I didn't know at the time how heavy that was until it happened to me. Um, but after we got the news, we left uh, the room and had to go out to the, to the hall and into the elevator. And I just remembered pushing the button and just kind of waiting for the elevator to open. And so I could get in and, and close and just break down, just have my moment. And, and so, I, and I just remember thinking like how, how awful to have, to get this news and then have to just sit and wait like, on the elevator door. Um, and so that was the inspiration for the song, um, which I, I didn't, it took me quite a while to write the song. I, th I, think, I think it was maybe a year after is when I finally was able to write about it because I wanted to really do the song like justice and I wanted to be able to really capture the feelings, but I, I, I felt like I needed to wait until it was, I was maybe outside of it to, to be able to really look back and see kind of where I was and, and anyway, um, so it took me a little bit to actually write the song, but, but once I started writing it, it, all the emotions just came right back. And uh, it was very, very cathartic for me. Yeah, absolutely. And, and certainly when I listened to your song, the emotions that a lot of the things that I thought I'd healed actually came back for me. And I know we've spoken about this, but if I just share with our listeners, the, the lyrics that really sort of got me, that really connected with my soul. So silence the only sound I can tell by her face this is not going to be okay that I'm not going to be okay and when I heard that I was just immediately taken back to every ultrasound every appointment where I'd just been greeted by that silence and then hear the words I'm sorry there's no heartbeat and it just you know it was just I was instantly there so that's how powerful your song is um, because for me this is years ago and also the people that I've shared it with who've had miscarriages years ago have also cried and broken down and remembered. And, you know, it, it's actually really, really powerful. So thank you. Um, thank, the you. Sorry. thank you. Nothing, I'm like tearing up right now. With this. <laughs> oh, bless you. Um, the second line that absolutely made me cry um, where I was just like, okay, I'm now a real mess. I can't hold it together anymore. It was when um, you say, if you weren't going to stay, why'd you come at all? And I know for me, it was like time and time again, it was like, what's the point of all of this? It just feels like such a waste of time. Even though I knew I was kind of one step closer than I'd been because at least I'd conceived, which had been my trouble for the first couple of years. But then you know, even though I have this really strong spiritual foundation, even though I knew that there was this bigger purpose for it, I knew that some something positive would come out of it at some point and I would be able to look back, reflect and, and join up all dots. It still in those moments just felt like such a kick in the guts. It was just that whole feeling of what does my future look like now? Because I'd imagined and, and seen my, my future child you know, the minute I was pregnant because I'd gone through so much and I waited so long for it, it was like, you know, my baby had moved into, into the nursery and, you know, I, I'd already sort of mentally started planning what life was going to be like over the next nine months, next year, the next couple of years. And then it's yeah. just taken away in an instant, isn't it? Just with the silence and then those words, there's no heartbeat. And then, yeah, and at, I mean, you've had to go through several but um but just to you're just i was just completely blown 
away. Like I had no idea that that was coming and, and no idea how to deal with that and to, just to leave. And I just go home and we just move on. Like it just, yeah, it's so difficult. It was it so, so difficult. It absolutely is. And I think for me, the first time it happened, it was the biggest shock because I wasn't prepared. And with all of my miscarriages, they were actually missed miscarriages. So I don't know whether you know what that means, but um, basically the, there's no heartbeat. The baby's died, but the sap keeps growing. Your body is still releasing pregnancy hormones. You're still growing. So you still feel pregnant. And then you go mm -hmm. for your ultrasound and you're told that there's, there's nothing there. And well, that was fine too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and also when I, when I lost the twins, it was, it was, you know, another miscarriage, but it was over a number of weeks because one was still alive and then the, the next one died later. So it was, but I think I'd sort of the second time round, I felt more, I guess, accepting of it in a way. I was almost prepared for it, that it might, it might end up that way. But the first time, like you, just not on my radar, just, I, it just wasn't anything that I was prepared for. I don't think you can prepare for it, even though logically you know that there's a, a chance and that, you know, many pregnancies end in miscarriage. And again, that's something we just don't talk about because mm -hmm. you've got that silence around the subject because you're not supposed to tell people until you've had your first scan that you are. Right. Pregnant. But that's yeah, what exactly what we did. Nobody knew. Nobody had any idea. No one even knew that we were um having troubles conceiving like we didn't tell anybody because i wanted that moment of being like we're pregnant like that was like i just kept wanting that moment and then you know every month would go by and then years would go by and it, and it was just eating me inside and then finally after our miscarriage i was just like i can't keep this in anymore i have got to like tell people and get it out because it was just kind of eating me alive and I, and I found myself having to kind of lie to people when when they would ask about if we're having kids and and things like that and I was just like I don't I don't want to lie anymore and I just want to tell people the truth and it might make them feel uncomfortable but it's I'm just tired of I'm just tired of it Absolutely. And I think that discomfort from other people comes from the fact that we don't talk about it. And because we don't talk about it, we don't shine a light on it. People don't really understand what it means. And I know for me, one of the things that really helped me to heal was when I had my first miscar miscarriage, this miscarriage, I went into hospital and had a DNC because I was told, you know, this could go on for weeks when you pass uh, the baby it could be very traumatic so I went into hospital as much as I absolutely hated hospitals at that point that was as causing me as much stress as anything else I went into hospital and I remember coming out from the operation and I had my gown on and I was cold and I just had this sanitary pad stuffed between my legs and it was kind of like when you when you feel a bit better and with the anesthetics worn off you can go home and I was just like you like what is this it what do we do now and one of the nurses realized I was upset and she actually called the asked me if I wanted to speak to the hospital chaplain and even though I wasn't religious and even though I knew it would mean that I was going to be delayed in actually getting out of hospital which was all I really wanted to do for some reason I said yes and she was the first person and probably the only person who actually acknowledged that um, I felt that that was my baby, that I'd lost a baby, not just a group of cells. And right. for her to acknowledge that felt, I felt heard in that journey. But what she did a couple of days later, we, when we left hospital, we wrote in a book of condolences, which was really lovely. And then a couple of days later, she phoned me and she asked me how I was going. And I was really honest and I was like, no, I'm very up and down. Some days I'm okay, some days I'm not okay. And she asked me if she could hold a funeral service for us. And we turned up at the chapel and I was expecting, you know, just a, a few words and we'd be out of the place for 10, 15 minutes. But what we were given was the tiniest coffin in the whole world. 
with a gold plaque with baby Willoughby um, inscribed on, on the top of the coffin. We actually had a proper funeral service. There was an order of service with beautiful poems and um, words that really helped me heal. And I, I share those in the book that I'm writing about my infertility journey because I hope that it encourages other people to have that closure. And even if they just plant a tree or write some words or have a song that means something to them, whether they have family there or they do it as a couple or even just as an individual. I think that closure and that moment to grieve, not just for what you've lost, but for what could have been and the future that you'd imagined is really, really important. And, and if I could offer any advice to anybody going through a miscarriage or going through infertility, that would that would be my sort of main advice is don't underestimate the power of closure, the power of that healing and that grieving process that needs to take place. So that's so great that you were able to do that. That's really wonderful. And how nice of her to care. Like <laughs> absolutely. I was so incredibly blessed. And I think about her a lot. And I think about how profound that was for me in my journey. And so second time around, I didn't need to do that, but definitely the first time it was, it was what I really needed. And I know I've spoken to friends who had miscarriages years and years and years ago, who haven't had that ceremony, haven't had that closure. And we've talked about doing that to help them to move on, to help them to heal. So, I mean, aside from your music, obviously, um, is there any, have you got any tips? Is there anything that you could offer as advice or support? Where's a wisdom for somebody who's going through a miscarriage, somebody who's going through infertility? Um, I think for me, um, what helped me a lot was not This is for everything in the same way. But for me, it was really wonderful to put my experience out in front of people so they could um, so they could hear it because my, my hope was to help someone else who's going through it because of all that you always hear, oh, I went through infertil infertility, but now I came out on the other side and I have my baby. Like those are the people that you always hear from but you weren't ever hearing from people who are currently going through this. And it was important to me to re to tell people I'm, this is where I'm at right now, like where you are in silence struggling. Um, and so I, I created an Instagram and, and stuff um, like that um, to just kind of tell my journey. And it was really for me to be able to just, put it out there and then I got such a response from people a lot of people that I knew that that were going through it that I would have had no idea and so then I that helped me so much to to just kind of heal knowing that I was helping someone else and, and so many people said thank you and mm. and it just that was really helpful to me on the other side of that coin, when you're looking, um, you, it's easy to kind of get into a hole on, of the infertility, like TTC world as well. Mm. You read story after story after story of, of people um, not having success and, and people kind of living in like a state of, of sorrow and that was actually hard for me to to just see that day after day so so there's kind of about there was a balance for me i needed to get it out and i did need to speak with people but i also found that it was really difficult to just keep reading about these people that were really 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 upset every day day in and day out and and so i had to kind of um, step back a little bit. So maybe one of those options are 
for someone who might be listening, I'm not sure, but just, just be careful to not sink deeper. I feel like it's kind of what I started to do. Um, yeah, so I don't know if that's good advice, but it's... No, I think it's really important because I know I've actually, now I'm on the other side of infertility and I'm trying to help other people. I'm in those forums and the Facebook groups and the groups where people are trying to share their journey with each other. But it is very difficult because it is there's a lot of loss. There's a lot of grief. There's a lot of sorrow. There's a lot of bad news. And also when you get those posts where somebody has fallen pregnant and of course, you know, you're happy for them, but that's hard too. Mm -hmm. So I absolutely agree with you that it, you've got to be able to have that balance because it can be quite a depressing place to be. Um, you've, and I think there's, there's lots of different groups and I think different groups will resonate for different people at different stages in their journey, whatever, whatever that is and wherever they're at. Mm -hmm. but I think that's great advice so thank you for sharing that yeah yeah I, I just um just have a balance I think is is probably pretty important especially when your your mind is is in that fragile state already and just like you said you are happy for people that um get pregnant but at the same time it's just you seeing that uh, it's another month and I still don't have mine like when will I have mine so you have to be able to get outside of it also absolutely because when you're in that state pregnant women are everywhere everything child related is everywhere isn't it you know it's just like everywhere you turn it's like you're you're seeking it out you know it's, it's on your radar and all of a sudden you're just surrounded by people who are either pregnant have children something child related and it's just it's hard to get away from it you know every christmas every child's birthday you're invited to every mother's day every father's day there's so many showers. yeah all of it it's really difficult absolutely so yeah i think we need to be very gentle with ourselves and and really honor our emotions and acknowledge them and label them for what they are and then be able to learn how to move through them and not attach to them because our emotions are temporary so they do they do change um which is which is a good thing. That's a positive thing. But when we're in that grief, it can feel like we're always going to feel like that, even mm -hmm. though logically we know that that's not the case. Yeah, I think that's great. Great advice to just recognize your emotion and let yourself have that emotion, but don't dwell on it and don't live in that. Yeah. Just that's what you're saying. So I, as you know, I love your song, Elevator Doors. So I'm really encouraging everybody to listen to it. I will attach a link, a YouTube link at the end of this conversation. So you can listen to it straight away. And you're on social media. I'd love for you to share with people where they can follow you and follow your songs and your work and your journey. Yeah, um, I'll, we are... We are Olivia Fox is, is the um, handle for all of our social media, but we're, we're mostly present on Facebook and Instagram. So it's at we are Olivia Fox. Okay. Awesome. So thank you so much for being very vulnerable and sharing, sharing your infertility journey with us. I know it's not easy. I know that you've helped me and a number of other people already. So I'm really excited about being able to connect with you and share your song. And oh, twice. I'm just, I'm so excited to be able to speak with you as well. And I can't wait to read your book. This is really, really exciting stuff. So thank you. Thank you for helping and, and helping women. And it's just incredible. We need each other. We absolutely do. We absolutely do. We need to shine a light on the subject and help remove that silence and that stigma and, and that shame. There's a lot of shame around infertility and there doesn't need to be. So I think, I think your song is going to help so many people, men and women. And I know even those people who are not struggling with infertility that I've played it to just have loved it. So I encourage everybody to listen to it. 
and I look forward to listening to more of your music and seeing where your journey takes you. And thank you um, very much. And all of our music is on Spotify. Um, awesome. All, all digital platforms, and then we also have YouTube, of course. Yeah. It's all we are Olivia Fox. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Absolute pleasure. Thank you very much. Take care. Thank you. You too. Lots of love. Bye. Bye. -bye. It's different now Silence, the only sound I can tell by her face This is not gonna be okay That I'm not gonna be okay People keep on walking Just like they did Why'd you come at all?